if you're into modding video games, let me know. I, I maybe we're, I'm... We're, we're, we're old and out of touch. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vin, that's Jordan, and that's Pedro, together with you, Shot Realm Dynamic, helping us form two canes of Voltron squishiness. Two that's canes, right. one Voltron. I'd, I'd watch that. <laughs> I'm just imagining a Voltron that turns into a toucan. Candy canes. He's candy cane. He's like Candyman, but with canes. <laughs> It's like Candyman, but instead of a white van, it's a, you know what, never mind. Handy canes. <laughs> Tap what that eject button. <laughs> you, ladies and gentlemen, playing around with a bunch of things. You might have called it uh, the Wednesday. I sat down. I said I was going to do it. And I finally got a chance to do it. I did a live install of um, Fedora Silver Blue. Unreal hardware. We're not using a VM because that's, I'm sorry, you're just selling out. You're like, oh, we're doing a live install and we're running a VM like cowards. That, that's, that's cheating. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, there's no risk. There's no, there's you're no anything. learning anything there. Yeah. And um, it did pretty good. You know, if you don't know about Silver Blue, it's built up, you know, it's flat packs, it's containerization all the way down, maybe. And, uh, you know, it was uh, interesting. Pedro showed up just to make sure I was hating on Gnome enough. And once he was satisfied with that, he went on about his day. He was like, okay. Right. <laughs> I went to make dinner, and then I sat down eating dinner. <laughs> were, were, you, were you just sitting there? He's like, say something looks bad about Gnome. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's I, just, I was just like, listening. He's, he's, just fine. He's he, just he, eating he, dinner. Eating, eating a soup. Eating a soup. He's like, man, I fucking hate Gnome. <laughs> <laughs> Too real. Uh I did, I did use Gnome, and I reacted to Gnome much like you would expect. Uh, I didn't hate on it, but I had questions, <laughs> which was fine. And um, just to put a bow on the joke, I installed the Fedora uh, XFC system, and that was completely painless. It installed, set up, rebooted. Had a couple issues. Uh, the Fedora mastodon account like retweeted me and somebody who was involved with the uh xfc project and uh fedora and, like, contacted me and they're like hey what do you think as always i'm like don't take any like feedback from me other than like hey it works because you'll just end up with like a workstation good times installed steam installed lutris mm -hmm. that was a uh... the one thing i will say about this though and I, I went over this in uh the like right just live on the video it's like when i open up software selection and i go to games Steam needs to be the first thing. Like, yeah, yeah. And apparently they didn't have a uh, flat, uh, flat hub. Flat hub. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like out of the box. Like I, if I'm going to install games, yeah, I know all these games exist. That's not what I'm here for. Let's quit lying to people. Like oh, you're here to install steam. Like, yeah, that's why I'm at the game thing. So yeah, I had to enable the flat hub repo. Everything else was uh, reasonably smooth. It picked up. It ran fine on um, rectangle 5,600 G. Hardware acceleration. We got half life up and running just out of the box. Didn't have to do anything special. Good times all around. Also, I put uh, about two minutes of Linux Teamcast Weekly from last week onto a uh, VHS. But did you rewind? Were you kind? <laughs> I had to a couple of times because it's like that Disney tape it was the one VHS tape I had laying around the house mm. that was in like shape enough to where it would still kind of work. And um, that the VCR is very dodgy. So it would occasionally just eat tape. So I had to <laughs> pop the top off and like get it lined up just right. And sometimes I'd have to rewind or fast forward just a little bit and then it would start working. So I was able to record about two minutes and then I figured out a way to play it back. Figured out a way. I have all the equipment to do it. It was just figuring out like I hit when it comes to like CRT, I had to bring a TV in here. So I, I, I could. I, I, I'm sorry, you, you didn't you put it up on anything. It was just on the floor. Yeah, I drug it. You know, it's like a CRT TV. And um, I had to set it because I was sitting in DaVinci Resolve, like taking pixels down, like one by trying to squeeze it on the um, CRT to make sure the alignment was right because I got like the aspect ratio kind of right, but it was off center. So I had to figure out, I was like, oh, you just ballpark this. There's no standards for this. Um, I posted that. I, I might make. Um, I have a pretty decent, like, I got like 10, 15 minutes recorded. It looks so legit. I mean, it, <laughs> it is. That's yeah. VHS, man. Crazy. It, it, if you've ever seen, like, you know, you see, like, VHS stuff. I don't know why I did it. I was like, curious, and it sounds legit, too. I mean, it sounds like a VHS from the mid-90s, which is, like, when you see the three-shot, Jordan made that comment. It's like, yeah, that, that that's, that's weird. But when you see a single shot, you're like, oh, man, that is, like, somebody just talking in their bedroom. 
<laughs> with like a camcorder ago. in front, yeah. with like a Sony like yeah. camcorder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just got that feel and that look. So fun times with that. Uh, come hang out with me tomorrow, as always. Uh, as uh, tune in at eleven thirty in the morning to see if fate yet again conspires. It is very much against me doing what I do uh, on Sundays, which is edit this Linux gaming show. AMA show up, ask me anything, play around, and uh, use me as background noise as I unfortunately don't have any haterade left for GNOME by then. How about you, Pedro Mateus? How, how are you doing? How are things? I, I have plenty of hate uh, for no. Uh, no, actually, I did, this week has just been uh, a little bit nuts with work because there's things happening with the NHS here. It's been all over the news. Everyone in the UK has probably heard about it. But no, no, I, I'm just happy with the um, little standy thing that I got for the Steam Deck. It sits right in front of the monitors and it holds it at just good enough of an angle that it doesn't obscure either of the two screens, so it works really, really, really well for that. And uh, to improve my uh, audio scape thing, I got these uh, <laughs> little wooden buttons. <laughs> oh, does that really help the, um, you know, just the fullness of the room tone? Not really, no. They just uh, prop up this uh, little table that the monitors are on just enough so I can shove the sound bar under there. <laughs> that was, I needed eight of these, and I had to buy that bag back there of a hundred of them. <laughs> so, yeah, now I have uh, 92 of them just If you give around. me, like, <laughs> maybe, all right, 10 minutes, we can workshop this into an audio file product about how it will increase <laughs> the fidelity and um, overall... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, you know how like you you get like a, a guitar body made of like really high quality wood. It like improves mm. the sustain and the resonance. You you put these under your sound bar, and it resonates with the entire no, no, room. You you put these under whatever it is the uh, legs on whatever stand yeah. it is on the floor, and it helps uh, resonate. Like those big chunky speakers, you put these uh, as the feet. <laughs> and we're sitting here in the entire time, like nobody's gonna blend the audio files. Already open their wallet. They're like, oh, yeah, I'm shut up and take my money. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sets. I need 12. <laughs> How about you, Jordan? Tripod life. Tripod life. Well, I, uh, yeah, I, I bought that tripod to film my gym sets. And yeah, now I'm, I'm done my current training block. My nervous system is killing me. Everything hurts and I get a week off. So that's, that's, that's my, that's my update. All right. Um, you want to talk about the sale? Yeah, I guess I guess, I, I guess we gotta tell, talk about the horse going on sale. Uh, it's buy one get one. Steam Linux update. It is that time of year, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I mean, it's not as special as it used to be, and I go over this. It's, 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 it's one, one of the many times. Yeah, now. right. It's like yeah, it's another. Zzz, we, well, uh, I need to buy one of those next time at a party store. Next time, yeah, next time at a party store. Yes, Ben, as much as you go to the party store. <laughs> <laughs> spirit halloween yeah all yeah, right um yet another sale here it is and did you buy anything i bought some things uh spring sale this is through march 16th through 23rd and i went looking around now the big big news is the uh, steam deck is 10 percent off mm -hmm. this week so you got like <laughs> that's the big one <laughs> eight seconds to go ahead and buy it and of course i go to my wish list and like nothing that i had on my wish list was more than um like 22 percent off which is as is tradition and uh i didn't find one thing i wanted to buy them i did uh just to complete my wolfenstein collection i bought the uh wolfenstein the old blood Ooh, it's that celasta dlc on sale i might need to pick some of that up oh celasta yeah it's the D D 5e pc game okay yeah. yeah how about you pedro did you um i have 50 sorry 48 games in my wish list but steam mm -hmm. is bugged and it says there's 50 there <laughs> and the one that has the highest discount is uh iron tales uh t-a-i-l-s which is the um batra Kotromakia game it's the the war of the frogs and the mice and it's uh yeah it I, I want to play it, but it's still a little too expensive for the three-hour runtime that apparently it has. So it's not enough for me to buy it, so I haven't bought anything yet. <laughs> uh, Four dollars was apparently what sold me on the uh, Wolfenstein, Jordan. Yeah, like, that'll yeah, do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Under five, five bucks. bucks. 
<laughs> yeah, I, my 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 fun money is a little spent. We did we did buy the kid a PC game, Hearts of Iron Four, and now I get I get Silent Saturdays, which is great. <laughs> As you're raising your budding dictator, it's a uh... yeah. Listen, listen, he can pretend to be a Hitler instead of actually being a Hitler. <laughs> Have fun then with that YouTube. Um, oh boy! All right. So Steam Deck startup movies is uh, you know you you brought up uh, Jordan. The, there was a full length movie somebody put on a yeah so some, someone <laughs> someone accidentally set their thing when once they opened that up to the entirety of Shrek so mm. and Valve had to go back and make a fix for it yeah which was <laughs> like no they'd already limited to the like the length to I think it was fifteen seconds mm. but he uh, found a way to overcome the limitation yeah and decided to test if he could. So then he went. Hey, you had to wait for the runtime of the movie. Yeah, you, you know, you know, the years start coming and they don't stop coming and they don't stop coming and they don't stop coming. So, um, to celebrate one full year of the Steam Deck not being available in Australia, um, Valve has decided to uh, head over to the point shop and make it. Uh, you know, you can just buy your own movies now. You got. Uh, we got. Turret Factory. I, I bought that one. I actually just bought that one because I had one. a bunch of points and nothing to spend them on. So I I bought that one. That's my uh, Steam Deck's uh, boot screen now. I am. Um, Steam points do I have? I just dude, uh, upper right hand corner. I was like, uh, I have 103,000 points and nothing is minimum. Mm -hmm. OG Big Picture. Oh man, vintage. So yeah, they're all 3,000. <laughs> There's not a lot of them though. Uh, four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty. I thought that said Dick Fetty for a second, but it says Deck Fetty. I'm sad. <laughs> what the hell's this? Gerard and It's some cartoon, yes. <laughs> so it's, 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 a, it's a it's a it's a Dutch cartoon <laughs> stipia? That no. seems like a Dutch name. Sure. Yeah, there's stuff on here I don't understand like that. I have Oh th those are the Steam emojis. The the default Steam emojis, they're those. <laughs> Huh. Okay, I, I got, I got, I got almost eighty six, eighty seven thousand steam points. I got to spend on some shit. Yes, <laughs> they got bullets. Mmm, pizza. Yeah, I guess you could buy them all. Gum uh, Gumby, Gumby. Fucking oh Gumby. man, steam bunt. So this is the one Pedro bought. He bought the. Uh... Mm -hmm. Does that does a little loading, and then the uh, library shows up. There, done. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I Shrek. Whatever. <laughs> you just well, need uh, Mike Myers. You need Mike Myers in a Shrek mask. I, I still, I, I do want to see the the Chris Farley version just, just to, just to see what it's like. Just to see. Yeah, just, just, to, just to see what what the differences are. Because oh man, yeah. couple well, other bits in Steam Muse. Yeah, we got we got the Stinker Launcher has a new release uh, two dot or uh, twelve dot twelve. Uh, it's like a Ubuntu version. For those of you who don't know, Steam Tinker Launcher is a uh, little handy script that you can stick in front of your uh, command uh, settings in the Steam preferences, and it'll bring up a nice little pop-up where you can set up things like DXVK, um, GameScope, mods, all sorts of crap. Um, so they have uh, a couple updates for this one. Uh, the Hedge Mod Manager will now... Hedge Mod. Hedge, hedge Mod, mod Manager. Hedge Mod. <laughs> hedge Mod hedge, Wizard. Yes. Hedge Mod Manager will uh, pull its own copy of 7-Zip if it's necessary now. They added a bunch of uh, dialogue options to the game scope uh, UI, including HDR mode, VR support, and a couple other advanced options. The dash dash list subcommand now actually has some syntax highlighting and human readable output, so you can actually see where what your games are and map them to their Steam IDs. And also, uh, this wasn't working for a while, but if you set your games to use the Steam Linux runtime through this tool, now it works. It actually respects the uh, the runtime traces, but uh, the the whole hedge mudge manager, as it turns to be called, is hedge that like mudge. the hot new thing? Is, it's, is it's that like the hot new mudge. thing? Yeah, <laughs> because I'm still using Vortex for uh, Fallout Three and Fallout New Vegas. Those are the two uh, games that I have installed that are actively using it. Uh, and I thought that was you know the good one, the one that everyone recommended for use with the uh, Nexus mods. So has that changed? If you're into modding video games, let me know. I, I maybe we're, we're, we're old and out of touch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we just need to put a couple of uh, cheat engine trainers on there. Uh, now it does support reshade, which is like I understand that reference. I understand what that is, and uh, special K as well. Uh -huh. And uh, the uh, latest Gamescope improvements have been uh, basically brought in from the Git version. 
So that's a very good idea. That's a very Except good idea. Except for like Use whatever GameScope. <laughs> GameScope improvement they've made on the um, Steam client itself. Because right now, if you're using GameScope on the desktop and you're running the beta client, you might have noticed your keyboard doesn't work when you're in games. Mm-hmm. Hmm. <laughs> uh, it keeps life interesting. It sure as hell does. You're like, huh. Uh, well, um, hmm. Hmm. What can I map to the mouse? Hmm. <laughs> that's when you uh, uninstall the new version of GameScope and you go back to the repo one. <laughs> which has been saving my butt. <laughs> or you, um, or you, you just go from like um, dot bin gamescope to slash user local. Here, here, here's the like, the, like catch. Um, I rolled it. I, like I, I did some A/B testing, and um, I rolled it all the way back to what was available in Debian uh, testing, which is older than what I was previously using. Still a problem. It's a problem with the client, not gamescope. Ah, Ooh. yeah. Damn it, damn it, Steam! You got to fix your shit. <laughs> Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, Steam's not responsible for fixing their shit on Ubuntu anymore. So, <laughs> yeah, so let, let, let's talk about this. They, this is from the Ubuntu Discourse website. Links to all this stuff in our show notes. They've been, uh, they've been pushing the snaps really, really hard. And uh, now they are moving the Steam snap out of early access. So they want people on Ubuntu who are running snap to try to install Steam uh, through that. Try to play a bunch of games. They are actively soliciting feedback, and uh, they actually want to you people to use the Proton DB standard of like gold, silver, bronze, and borked. Which, which you know, I'm glad they didn't feel the need to invent their own system this time. This is the time. <laughs> this is the time. Not not all the other times. This time, you know, except for the whole snap thing. But yeah, <laughs> Pe- Pedro, talk like that will not get you employed by Canonical. Hey, Clearly, man. yes. <laughs> you gotta get excited. You gotta feel a little extra sexy because, man, you get there's nothing wrong with containers and containers, baby. Pop, pop, bubble wrap. Um, canonical. You know, they they've said like they, they're planning on moving the uh, Steam Snap out of early access to stable. To which I can't be alone as we all turn around uh, in unison and ask, "You had a Steam Snap?" <laughs> all right. <laughs> Oh. I, I think we'd brought it up at one point when they first introduced it. It was like, yeah, please go test, do the thing. But yeah, yeah. no, I too forgot that it exists. <laughs> okay. I, I, yeah, because, you know, there's, there's a handy little Steam client installer that's just like a Debian package that you can just download from their website. Um, listen, man, we're going we're, we're gonna to Firefox the science out of this potato. Uh, now, one thing I did notice is uh, D, D. Hollinger. It's like, yo. Um, some version of Proton will run games in bubble wrap, whether or not you want it. So how's this handling that? And, you know, there's a link to, um, the St- also with the steam runtime wants to be run in a flat pack, which is part of the, the bubble wrap flat pack things kind of synonymous. Um, yeah, both, uh, games and OS tree implementations. Yeah. So it was like, how does, uh, how's it going to handle the older games and stuff like that? To which the reply was to, I don't know, the steam snap i don't know (laughs) apparently it should work but yeah no older games they run in bubble wrap because you know to ensure compatibility (laughs) what i installed a steam with a flat pack on debian just to you know take the pepsi challenge right Mm -hmm. and it had to install like all the nvidia drivers and and completely Mm -hmm. that's why i was like nope we're not doing that that's one way to uh not break the um the sandboxing yeah. is to have the drivers inside the flat pack. Yeah. Times. <laughs> that, that's one way of me going, no, I need a very particular version of CUDA. <laughs> I, I, I need this drivers that is certified for DaVinci Resolve. Like, like, um, how yeah, do you have got to lock that in on the flat pack version of DaVinci? Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> no, no flat pack version of DaVinci. Get on that DaVinci. Never game. will be. They don't even allow it to be distributed. Um, I'm surprised there's a, there's not even a Debian for DaVinci. It's a dot .run file for Fedora. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the uh, in, install script. I don't remember if it uses Mojo installer. It was something similar. It looks like a, <laughs> looks like a Windows install wizard. Proprietary um, software. <laughs> oh, no. Let's not talk about that during our video game segment, Pedro. <laughs> it's more about the distribution method. It's like I'm thinking NVIDIA drivers, ah. run file. The old uh, FGLRX, run file. No, DaVinci, no, no. run Distribution, file. you mean like the open source Steam client. <laughs> Uh yeah, the yeah that, that 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 is a dab. <laughs> that is a dab. <laughs> Although, as some as you know, the person that got permission from Valve before they even changed the uh, terms of service on how you could redistribute the Steam client on Linux, mm-hmm. 
I was told that as long as we don't touch certain specific things, you can repackage the Steam client and distribute it on, say, a distro's repositories as much as you like. Well, proprietary software has been uh, distributed as packages because even the Debian, um, like Magic, um, like Media Express stuff, and their drivers are Debian packages. Like, out mm-hmm. of the box, you don't have to do anything. It's ready to go. And you see that or you, RPMs? If yeah, you you've seen RPMs for RPMs. the past twenty years, man, with proprietary <laughs> stuff. So that's going to do that for Steam News. A couple of new games. I threw this in because I don't give a fuck about this. <laughs> but I knew these two would have something to say. See, I thought you threw this in because it's like, oh, this uh, it's about mechs. Oh, it's a card game. Never mind. But uh, it's Jupiter Moon's Mecha. It's just a prologue for now. Uh, they're probably going. It's probably going to be free to play until the actual thing comes out. Uh, it's not available. It will be released at some point during Q1 2023, or so they claim. Uh, they say it's a um, card battler. Uh, turn-based roguelike type of situation with a mech uh, spin and yeah you got me i'll try it whenever it comes out i'm gonna try it yeah because yeah, i know that's i, that's I too game. like uh, giant robots and card games so yes yeah. i too am on board <laughs> it, it is it is very much it seems to uh, not much uh, in the way of deck building you apparently just have your own deck as it were and you just play the cards and you win the battles but um, no, I, I I will try it. I will absolutely try it. It, it reminds me of that one. The gameplay reminds me a little bit of that one FTL like game. It wasn't Trigon. It was the um, the other one, like uh, Space Debris or something like that. But yeah, um, you you were, you were playing people who like go into spaceships and like scrap them. But it was like a rope like the, the the name of it's escaping me. But it had very similar like deck builder mechanics oh, yeah. to this one. Uh... Uh, I can't remember the name. Yeah, it, <laughs> Space Cavengers. Some, some, <laughs> something like that. I, I, yeah. What, what, whatever. Uh, the, 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 the point is, I'm here for it. I want it to come out. Please send us some keys, people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's make, okay. Make, make I mean, Ben play it. Make him, yeah. su- make him suffer. <laughs> My God, if you, we don't want to put you out. I mean, if you're busy, it's, it's, it's good. <laughs> yeah, come so, in. Just like kick, kick your shoes off. Sit down on the couch. <laughs> How many of you had a Dreamcast? My cousin had a Dreamcast that I wasn't allowed to play. That's probably for the best. I had a PlayStation 2. <laughs> How many of you played Crazy Taxi back in the 90s? <laughs> At the arcade? Yeah. Arcades, yeah. <laughs> you ever thought to yourself, man, you know, one thing I need in my Crazy Taxi homage, my um, remake, is a little bit of Fifth Element. That goddamn yep. son. Cor- Corbin Dallas, Lilu, Lilu Dallas, <laughs> the full pass. six degrees of freedom. <laughs> oh man, the secret ingredient, bitches, is love. That's uh, that's the uh, fifth element. Yep. Um, gosh, okay. okay, you know what? I just read the description for the first time. Fuck me. Uh, the fifth element yeah. meets crazy taxi. Yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it, 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 it is what it says on the tin. It, it's uh, uh, I, I thought I was bringing something to that. Uh, no, I wasn't. Uh, <laughs> dodge mile high skyscrapers, blabbermouth pedestrians, and fast paced race against time. Okay, here's, here's my thoughts on this, because I'm watching the trailer. There's, there's a couple of video trailers on this, and I have to assume that the, the developer, the sole developer of this, has a few hundred hours behind the wheel of it's this like taxi. It's like Joshua's leg syndrome, right? Where, like, that, that trailer <laughs> is by the dev who fucking knows how to move Joshua yes. around. However, watching this trailer, it's still, it still it controls, like, such level of ass that he's still crashing into things. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that, that worries me a little bit however it is verified on deck and uh, re- reading the reviews of this it does uh, kind of seem to be another case of like a functioning prototype being sold as game mm. at least the reviews are mixed now because when the game first came out and I sent the developer emails like oh yeah 6 degree of freedom crazy taxi let's go mm-hmm. uh, and the dev came back like do you guys mind holding off a little bit I'd rather uh fix the issues that are causing all of the negative reviews to happen before I said GK is like that. Can fine. I ask you a question, Pedro? Yeah. <laughs> so what do you think about a game being complete when there's no intro, no title, nothing, and immediately as soon as you hit play, it just drops <laughs> you in the game because that's how this thing shipped. <laughs> No option menus, no screens. You were just. It, to start it's game. not the first time that that would have happened. I mean, remember Limbo? The first time you started Limbo? Straight into the game. <laughs> uh, Metal, Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain. Yeah. <laughs> then you go to like go to the options menu, and there is none. Yeah. No, 
You, yeah, you, you don't get to the options menu until you finish the first gameplay. It's, no, like, no, it's like no. fucking Senwa. Sweetness. There is none. Ah. doesn't exist yeah. it's not an unlockable it's not dlc it's not an achievement achievement unlocked an options yeah no it was uh when the then the developer when the developer said that it's like okay let's go actually look at the reviews like oh yeah it's negative and it had like 28 percent positive reviews Oof. i don't but, know yeah I mean, um, we'll wait that's cool it looks like there was a a round of uh you know, free products that have been sent out and like this crazy taxi, this is not seems to be yeah. the uh general the 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 driving is stiff, the handling sucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gotta, like I, said, no, I, I, I think we got another bad thing of like functioning prototype being sold to this game. But none of this matters because god damn it, nothing will get Pedro into the show notes quicker than a fuck mothering never wonder night update. Look, they that hasn't happened in like months over a like year and four months uh because and three days and 27 <laughs> seconds <laughs> the last update that never winter nights and has edition had had was on december 2021 so yeah it's been a while but they're back they have a new version uh new development build uh if you just right click go to properties the betas there's you can pick development build as a branch and they, they have some meh significant change logs the 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 steam post is like okay we have a bunch of new things just go read that uh provide some uh feedback on discord holy fuck wait so do i gotta go to their website to read their fucking update yeah yep get absolutely fucked never (laughs) winter nights and everybody involved in this oh yeah slide into your discord also double fucked (laughs) like everyone's doing nowadays yeah (sighs) but yeah no instead instead of uh, register on our forums go to our irc channel (laughs) yes uh, it's, uh, yeah, the big one is the, um, arm 64 client that, uh, yeah, that's a new thing. They have a cartoon like post-processing shader, which I have yet to figure out how to enable properly. Uh, they have eight, uh, up to eight multi-class ability. You just change the 2DA file and you can set how, how many multi-classes you can have and a positive buttload of, uh, actual, um, scripting options that have been added now. Just more things in general and i i like i approve i i enjoy never what the fuck is a tune post-processing shader <laughs> makes it look more cartoony sounds yeah, it's the cartoon. Blocky. Filthy. <laughs> so basically maybe like a cell shader filter i don't know the ar64 thing kind of fucking came out of nowhere they're yep. doing both the uh client and the server for linux and mm-hmm. like i would love to fucking see them go back and do that for other beam dog ports or maybe even myth force that would be dope as hell if that's just running on like snapdragon oh dude mm-hmm. Um, but the eight, eight, multi eight, eight, an eight way multi-class rules is written for 3.0. There's a 10% per, uh, multi-class. So if you're doing that, you are losing 80% of your experience points every time you kill something. Yeah. But I guess you can, you can set it in the game to whatever, um, penalty you want it. Just change the 2DA file. Uh, and yeah, I guess if you're just going to go by default, yeah, no, you're getting 20%. Of your XP. <laughs> hey man, I even hear rumors this game has online co-op. It oh, does. it does. We 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 did that. I I, yeah. I dropped in when Pedro was running through this game. I pl- I played my wizard and I threw fireballs at him and I'm like, you yep. you're a paladin. You have saving throws. I don't give a shit about you. <laughs> I was a paladin ranger, so uh, I had more than saving throws. I had evasion. <laughs> I'll you, please note this review might not be relevant after all these years in 2018. Two- <laughs> uh, child. Um, well, I mean, yeah, no, now, when now, uh, now Enhanced an Edition adult. first came out, it was rough, but it's much better now, and it's actually better than the original. Finally, well, it, the, the games like you know, from like 2000, what two, two originally yeah. and 2003 on Linux. I think uh, at this point, you know, the bugs are like quote unquote part of the charm, right? Uh, they're expected, yeah, because like you're kind of like, relying on them. Would get just mad at you if you work. fixed them, yeah. <laughs> no, no, this is how the game works now. This is like well, we got things around it. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. Implying 3.0 D and D was a well designed game to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people really liked it when uh, 4.0 came out. There was a uh, some backlash. There, there, <laughs> there was. I'm not. I'm not gonna get into that. We don't have three days to go through that. <laughs> um. What I about guess, the DLC? Is that like uh They're the premium modules. Yeah. Uh, they just, basically finally did a good because some of the premium modules that were originally available for Neverwinter Nights got canned when um 
Bioware originally started developing um, other games and just kind of dropped the ball Dragon on... Uh, yeah. uh, basically, it was EA's fault. They said, no, you're going to focus on this and only this. So uh, everything that was pre-EA, like Neverwinter Nights, kind of got the shaft. <laughs> Wait, so like, can I play as Treebeard? Yeah. Yeah? Which one? Three beard, Pick one. On, 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 only the third one. Only thir- three beard number three. Is there like an DLC? The no. uh, the second expansion, no. you uh, actually fight the Formians, and in just, the third just, expansion, just, you can help a Formian like, queen. If if you want to be a tree, just be a druid. Easy peasy. Yeah, I want to be a bitch ass half ass. Oh, I want to be a tree tree. <laughs> that, that that that's how you do it. You're a tree with a flaming sword and like fucking full plate. <laughs> You're a tree with a flaming sword. You're about this close from self-immolation. <laughs> also, but, I don't want to be But able then to you move. give them hugs, right? And then they, you do extra fire damage. I just want to be like tower defense, but I'm the tower. Yep. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, isn't that just Dome Keeper? Sure. All right. We got some dwarves down there mining. Yeah. Pretty awesome. Yeah. Oh, man. Do- Dome, Ke- Dome Keeper across <laughs> fucking rings of power. Yeah. Dw- Dw- dwarf Keeper. I don't know. All right, coming up next, Godot is kind of being distributed on the Epic Games Store. A little bit. Sort, sort of. The news are coming your way. Do not worry. But uh, yes, we do need to thank all of you uh, who have decided this was a good idea. I, I still can't figure out why, but you know, you decided it was a good idea, so here we are. <laughs> so I wonder if we could get like chat GPT to write an intro for the new segment for Pedro to read. Probably. Probably be about equally as coherent. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe more so. <laughs> but, so what, here, here's the question: what, what, what do, we have to tra- do we have to train Chat GPT on Pedro first? No. Or do we just? No, okay. I wanted to write it in Portuguese, Brazilian. So I'd have to translate it on the go. <laughs> Fuck yes. <laughs> yep. Sure. Sounds sounds about right. And it also means you can ad lib because nobody's gonna call you on it. <laughs> there was like three people <laughs> that yeah, listened uh, to the show. Who you, you, you think speak Portuguese? You think they're gonna write in? No. <laughs> no, we're not. We're, they, they, they wouldn't narc on you, Pedro. No, they they they, they, like they wouldn't go to our Spotify uh, page uh, and leave us a voicemail <laughs> or head on over to patreoncom slash linuxgamecast hey. and leave us a message. Ah! Bringing it back, bringing it back. Yeah, join our Patreon. We got some cool shit in there. You can get access to our Discord channel, which you can also get to by subbing to us on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Linux Gamecast. Get inside. You can listen to the pre pre super shows where we talk about bullshit for an hour before we go live here. Uh, you got a custom RSS feed for that as well. Uh, you can get access to the show notes. You can RSVP to game streams. I'm, we're finishing up Borderlands. I think we got what, two or three more sessions to go. And then we're, then we're done. Then we're moving on to Strange Brigade. Ooh. Um, What's Strange Brigade? That's the uh, treasure hunting left for dead. Like, oh, I downloaded that and tried it. That works really well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I've been, I've been really wanting to try that out. So, uh, that that's what's on tap after uh, after we're done Borderlands. Right. And then you're doing Trackmania on uh, Tuesdays and Fridays. Are you, you're doing both uh, the Trackmania Stadium Two and the new one, right? We got a little bit for everybody. Uh, yeah, we do vintage retro classic old school Trackmania squared. On Tuesdays and Fridays, but in the after shows, and we, we always start, unless it's a nice map. Unless it's a nice map. If it's a nice map, we don't do Cup of the Not Day on Fridays. But if it's not a nice map, we participate in that. We're a Linux game guest. We got our own club. And we're representing for the filthy casuals, the part time players, the people got other shit to do. And we're usually finishing in the top 10. So it feels good. It feels good to see some LGC representation over there. Yeah. That's what and we t- said. We- tell everybody we're running Linux and they accuse us of cheating. Yeah. It's awesome. Oh, speaking speaking of cheating, we got to thank our brand new Patreons, including Mr. Glorious Eggroll, who decided to drop Ooh. on by. Hello, hello, Eggy. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we got Jeremiah as well. He was a bullfrog. He was a good friend of mine. I never understood a word he said, but he did give us money on Patreon. And we got to thank Nmag for increasing his pledge. Uh, so thanks a lot for that. If you want to support us, uh, just spread the word. Sub to us on Patreon. We got store as well. Like store and subscribe. Sense. Like sc- our podcast subscribe. We are on technically smash on YouTube. the bell. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the um, I know I make a joke of that, but even even when I brought it up on Twitter earlier this week, because YouTube has now allowed us to turn our uh, playlist into a podcast. Mm-hmm. A podcast. What does that mean? <laughs> we don't know at all. But <laughs> I asked the question. It's like, okay, can you reverse the order of the? No, no, you can't reverse the order of the playlist. 
Why? So what's why, what's the point? <laughs> wait a minute. So why would you want to listen to a podcast backwards? To check uh, for so satanic messages, you could listen messages, to the obviously. first episode first, and then continue no, on down? No, you want to listen to the latest episode. <laughs> you want to listen to the newest? Like, yeah, hey, I'm going to watch this show. What is it? Never heard of it. Let's start at the first episode, but it's Doctor Who. Get wrecked. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, oh, dude, yeah, if you, got, if you want to watch LGC, you got to start from episode one. Fuck that shit. I would not wish that on my worst enemy. Uh, but yeah. Uh, uh, well, we, this is like the whole thing, man. Um, the Well, this is not an evergreen show. So, yeah. the, I mean, it's weekly, topical weekly news. weekly news thing. So, and like, unless you wanted to go back and like, but this is one of the very unintentional things that we've done over the last decade is uh, to give you a weekly, a captured insight into what was going on in the world of Logics Gaming. Mm-hmm. Like, you can go yeah. back and track the uh, progress or lack of. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lot of lack of, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, but. Uh, so yeah, bringing it back. We got a store, store.linuxgamecast.com. Buy some merch. Palm. Dot Palm. Dot Palm. Dot Palm. Dot Pomeranian. Buy your LGC branded Pomeranians. They will bite you. Um, <laughs> and we got uh, wish, wish Zones as well. If you head on that over to linuxgamecast.com, that's over the support. I have one. Jill has one. Pedro has one. Ben has one. And if you give Ven stuff off there, then he will put your name it in disappear. lights. There we go. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, if but. you send any of us, uh, any of us, any stuff off Amazon, you can send us a little thank you note. We'll read it on the air within reason. So you can, I don't know, make us say some goofy, goofy stuff. It's going to be within two reasons and a half. One yeah, reason. The, basically, don't get us banned off Twitch. Point don't get us thrown in jail. Uh, that, that's it. <laughs> basically, guys, we'll, we'll, we'll get to getting thrown off Twitch in a minute. But first, we got to talk about Godots of the Old Republic. Yes, go, God Tor, go, go door, go the door. Uh, so, Godot Engine, you might have heard of it. We've talked about it quite a bit. It's our favorite open source uh, 2D, now 3D game engine. And uh, they've been really, really uh, working on improving distribution channels, and they got a new one. You can now download the Godot editor off of the Epic Game Store. Well, sort of. You can, it's EGS, so you can get the Windows client and the Mac client, but that's it. Uh, you, I guess you could use Heroic to install Godot on Linux, but you'd have to run it through Wine. Yeah, but, you know, honestly, more, more distribution channels for Godot is a good thing. It gets more eyes on the project. More people use it. Uh, more people can get updates. And because they're, they're constantly improving stuff, like every time we have a, uh, a new Godot thing, they're like, oh, yeah, we've completely fixed the lighting or, you know, improved texture handling or something. So it's 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 like getting your blender install off of steam right it's just a convenient way of making sure that you always have the up-to-date version not have to worry about it i suppose it's a good idea to put godot in front of literally everyone who plays fortnite just you know bring some awareness because they're never going to look at it because they start fortnite and that's it the epic game store is just there to launch fortnite and the um <laughs> you know when you say that man i'm like oh well i don't know how do, how do we get it installed uh from the Epic Game Store, like, can we install, like, the Heroic Game Launcher in Lutris, then use that to, uh, like, download and install maybe yeah. from the website? Probably, yeah. <laughs> Someone do that experiment right and let us know about it. Uh, the Godot build you can download from EGS. It's the exact same open source release as one of the other platforms, except, uh, no Linux, because fuck Linux, and it's Epic. The sad thing is, is this is what we all expected. I didn't go to the Epic Game Store expecting, like, oh, yes, this is a popular open source game engine on uh, all platforms and of course hey this is going to have a linux version i'm like no there's not going to be a linux version because we're still living in the um you shocked me you shocked me when you said no the mac version is available i'm like yeah. what <laughs> yeah that uh, that fanfic i would have believed but like strangely enough i'm like yeah maybe 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 but i knew for an absolute fact was, there's no way that in like this we're, we're still living in that la la fanfic of, like linux doesn't exist you guys I'm, you know, we're Epic and we're here to democratize gaming platforms and all that, long as it's on the closed source operating system that is Windows. Mm-hmm. Um, and so Mac, apparently. <laughs> is for your own good, citizen. No. Here's the thing, though. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I, I understand that Epic has thrown plenty of good money at the Godot project, but, but just damn, all right? It would have been... Just an interesting if line to draw in the sand, wouldn't it, Godot? It it would have been wouldn't very it have funny. been an interesting thing to say? We will be on the Air Epic Store. That sounds awesome, and we thank you for your support. Fucking butt. 
<laughs> and Eek. you got add Linux support. And thus, Godot was never released on the Epic yeah, Games Store. Yeah, no, Godot would have never been on the uh, thing and because... to answer both of you, and nothing of value would have been fucking lost because we're talking <laughs> about the Epic Games Store. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> they then, released then the numbers. Why bother talking uh, about They released it? the numbers and they had, what, uh, 20 million users? Something like that? Well, yeah, yeah every, everyone needs to log in and get their free games. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm looking at that. Oh, 20 million users. That's a fifth of the concurrently active users on Steam. Good job. <laughs> Why do you hate freedom? I know. <laughs> Quite the opposite. Freedom it's just a little bit sad that even after all this time, and now that they finally have a uh, shopping cart for their online store, uh, it, it, it's. Um, so not, I don't know. I don't understand what your hang up is like. They, they had enough <laughs> metrics to realize that they didn't need a shopping cart. <laughs> right up until people yeah. started complaining and the yeah. accounts started getting locked. <laughs> yeah, they, they still understand they don't need one. They just put one up just to shut people up. No one yeah. buys more than one thing, if that. It's not like people bought two things at <laughs> one time. Buy, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I go through the checkout dialogue yeah. for my free game. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Like there's never in that's the what most people do on the Epic Store. Yes, they go there yeah, to get the free game and get it. No one's ever had an actual need for a shopping cart at the Epic Store because no one's ever <laughs> bought more than one thing at a time. Even if that, but no, it's I those just, damn custom Linux kernel. <laughs> I would have liked to, um, you know, especially with like the Steam Deck, and I understand like they get they get a hate boner, and you know they're they're against choice and freedom of choice, and so we still need to pretend like. Uh, you know, it's a very um, interesting position to take when you're pretending something that clearly exists and is like the thing powering the servers that they're probably hosting it on and the Steam Deck. And like, like it's a very uh, best Korea type way of looking at like things not real. La, 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 la. Like, it, it, I think the, the whole is like, okay, Valve is pushing Linux, everything, you know. Steam Deck runs on Linux, yeah, and they've been paying a bunch of Linux developers to improve uh, gaming on this side of the open penguin. source developers, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Epic's going, oh, so that's Valve's little thing, so we're going to do the diametric opposite of it and just fuck that. No, we're not going to support See, Linux that because that's Valve's I, thing. That they couldn't <laughs> be doing that because they're they're trying to help people out with freedom and choice, Pedro. So what you're describing is not the actions of a company that would be doing such a thing. I no, mean, uh, or the company that the pays name of the developers game, right? to like, maintain their games um, exclusive on their store for a year. I, I mean, I, again, the Epic is giving away all these free games, but they got to remove uh, old games from you know just being able to be downloaded. You know, mm -hmm. Yeah, no, the the games that were being hosted on fucking GOG can't buy them anymore. You know, oh. I really like how they took it like an extra day to make sure they were removed from GOG because we were talking about it. We go, hey, at least we can still get them from GOG. You're like, yeah, that's right. They they're like. Oh God shit! Right. More. <laughs> yeah. right. It's well, like good job. That that that's real AAA games publisher behavior well, right there. Just you know, spiked. we'll just call it the Epic Revisionist History Game Store. Whatever you want to do, man. Let, let's <laughs> pretend Linux is not a real thing. Uh, probably not the only thing you pretend it doesn't exist. Let's talk about Twitch. Yeah, it's it's a bit of a changing of the guard over at uh, Twitchland. Uh, the uh, the M Emmett Shear, the uh, former uh, president. Uh, or the former CEO of Twitch, uh, who was one of the OG Justin TV people, one of the original three employees. Um, Justin as TV, what's that? Justin TV was a was the precursor to Twitch back when uh, the dude named Justin was running it, and he wanted to stream videos of himself. Uh, eventually, got transformed into Twitch, the the Twitch that we know and loathe today. Um, but yeah, so uh, it's been 16 years, and he has decided to step down, citing that he wants to. Twitch was his baby, but now he's got an actual baby, so he wants to take care of that. Uh, he's still going to be remaining on the board in an advisory capacity, but the current president of Twitch, Dan Clancy, is current is going to be taking over from him. Do we do we got to blare the trumpets? Do we got we got any fond memories of old Emmett? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like the first flag that I get is like, dude's leaving to spend more time with his family. I'm like, mm, I mean, yes, and you know that, that that's up. <laughs> Pretty often, like the code for like fuck this noise, I'm out. It's been a good run, <laughs> but what you got to think about is he's been doing this for 16 years too. So, and he's also not running the show anymore. Mm -hmm. No matter mm -hmm. where you're at, even if you were one of the founders, like Amazon makes the decisions. Now that's just how it is. 
and the new guy is rolling in. I've seen some mixed stuff about him on the internet. Like people are a little worried because he was one of the people behind uh, implementing and pushing for the 50 50 split on Twitch, mm. which, you know, notably uh, a lot of creators had a problem with, because, you know, they're definitely going to just 50 50 with everything, no special deals or anything like that anymore. And a lot of people are going to be giving up some income, bigger streamers, but you know, this guy, uh, the new guy coming in, he's worked for NASA. He's worked for the Google books project. And, um, for like little people like us, I don't think anything's ever going to change. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they could do away with the pretense of Twitch being its own separate platform from uh, Amazon. And yeah, I don't think it would change for most people. I, I don't <laughs> think that's, I don't think that would necessarily be a consequence of like a change in like CEO leadership. But yeah, like I, I think for the most part, at least for like the, in the, in the next like six month period, I don't think there's going to be any real changes. But, you know, inshedification ensues, so we're, we can always just look forward to all online services just progressively getting shittier and shittier as time goes on. Well, I mean, such is the way of things, and, you know, I guess, like, maybe the one thing you could always worry about if you need something, you know, if you if you get up this morning and you're like, shit's just going too well, lads, um, if you need something in the back of your head, you could definitely say this guy's like, ah, oh, shit, I don't want my name associated with what's coming down the pipe. I'm up. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, the incoming CEO uh, was also the one that made the cuts to uh, the big streamers last year. Yeah? The 50-50 thing I was talking about. Yeah. yeah. Uh, th- so, yeah, there's uh, <laughs> it's probably he w- the like the one who's leaving is probably going like, I didn't like that. And well, you, well see, you can fuck off. <laughs> I mean, this has affected even like people I follow. Uh, what's uh, it me, JP? Mm-hmm. He's, we we uh, all re- love JP. He's all started a uh, He's had to start a patron because he's like, shit, I'm going to lose like 20% of my uh, income. Yeah. To, uh, and that's it. It's messed up. But like, if you got that single source of income and you're relying on that, do we, what needs to take place? What is going to, what's going to be the next thing? What's going to be the next company? Because we've already seen, we just say nobody could ever do anything with YouTube. Nobody could ever out take YouTube. And we didn't. Twitch never really took on YouTube. It took on a side project that YouTube yep. just couldn't handle, which was <laughs> live streaming. Which you can do. You can do better on YouTube, but people don't use it because it's not associated with... Um, it's not where people go for the streaming. Yeah. And even the, the whole YouTube gaming attempt, uh, which is still languishing there, you know, <laughs> for how many other services Google has killed in the meantime, YouTube gaming is still there. Have, so I, I, ha- I haven't looked into the, the, the YouTube streaming stuff in a while. Have they changed the interface again? Because that was the thing that kept pissing me off. All the they time. Kept like, yeah, that, that's why no one's fucking using YouTube streaming is because no one can figure out how. Because well, once you learn, <clears throat> they change the UI on you. <laughs> It's not as crazy as he, he, the biggest thing with like YouTube that really set me off is there. We used to be able to just have a page and like, Hey, go live, like on Twitch. And now mm. it's generated each and every single time. Mm. Like anytime I want to go live on YouTube, I have to go live on YouTube. And then I can share the URL. Mm. I can't mm. just have like a static URL. I'm like, I don't have time for that. And at least Twitch is like, Hey, you just go to the page and do the thing. What is going to be the next thing? Or, or, are we going to see an evolution of uh, what we have now, or do you think it's going to be another surface? Something will eventually well, come along. And Instagram used to have the live streams. A lot of uh, influencers back in the day used to use the Instagram streaming. Uh, well, there's TikTok. TikTok? Yeah, <laughs> uh, t- like TikTok isn't necessarily built for like that sort of long form content, though. Oh, Maybe- but they've did it. Yeah, like that's a. Like the live streaming to talk the live streaming, yeah, you can just start thing. Like streaming. Those tools yeah. are there, yeah. <laughs> so so I, maybe I don't know. Maybe Facebook? maybe maybe uh, Facebook already <laughs> tried and failed, right? Like that was uh, <laughs> <laughs> Facebook bought the uh, Microsoft one and yeah. then shut it down. <laughs> but I mean, Facebook absorbed that because Facebook gaming is a thing inside of mm-hmm. Facebook. Like, mm-hmm. That is like yeah. its own category for streaming. So what is it other than just like we don't fucking know? Like what would you like to see, Jordan Zwang? What would I like to see? I don't know. The, 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 the fucking crack smoking pipe dream is an ecosystem of like many, many streaming companies or like maybe, maybe some sort of decentralized peer to peer something. I don't, I don't know. Some, some, or I don't, something with like a, a decent model where creators can make like a modest income because we had, we had, the, I think the, the problem is like with Twitch when you have these 
guys who are pulling in like hundreds of thousands of dollars creates a bit of an unrealistic expectation. I think maybe maybe creating environments where people can make more modest money and then like supplement that with more side projects, I think is probably a more sustainable thing. I don't I don't I don't know what would actually be required from a technology standpoint to do it. But I don't that's think why it's there about are... the technology at this point. I think it's about the money. Money. Well, yeah. yeah well, of, of of course, it's always going to be about the money. And at that and at that point, I think it's going to be like uh, other other services will rise up to offer like it's what Twitch used to be. It's what YouTube used to be. And then they're going to inshitify, and it's going to get worse and worse and worse. I I, re- I read something interesting about how like platforms have sort of like captured all of the um all of the available users more or less, right? So the only way to like expand and make more money is to make things more shitty and charge people for the stuff they used to get. Yeah, so, dilute it, make it more appealing to the mainstream. How <laughs> lowest dare common you denominator. That. Hang on a minute, let me change my Discord theme <laughs> real quick. <laughs> <laughs> so, so really, I, 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 I don't know the, the, like the, the that, again that that was my pie in the spot sky like pipe dream thing. The reality is that it's just going to get worse and worse and worse, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how it's going to get worse, and I don't want to speculate, because my worst idea is probably going to come true. Well, I, I was talking back and forth with a couple people on Hacker News about this a particular topic, and I'm like, at the end of the day, like I've always treated Twitch the same way as I treat YouTube. It's a content delivery network that like every couple of months will write you a check for 20 bucks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which is like, that's, that's pretty good for a CDN. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to pay for the hosting, and you're going to give me some money every now and then? <laughs> but at what cost, though? Like, at what data is mined and users and all that other... Yeah, what, what, be- what, right, what rights do you have? Your, Literally your sense, none. Your, 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 your speech you're is, like, the extremely down. censored. Yeah. You get the, and it's that, and you're chasing, you know, it's that race to the bottom of the brainstem. You know, it's like the YouTube suggestions that I see every time I log into our dashboard. It's like, no, no, no. You need brighter colors, quicker things, uh, don't don't focus on you know what you're trying to educate people on. No 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 no. You here's here's some topics to go chase that our advertisers really like spending money on right now. So why did you make some videos about this stuff? I've been fucking with the algorithm for the past two weeks. <laughs> Notice me, senpai. Big red. No, uh, I, I'm just trying to confuse it at this point because I, what I'll do is I'll go to a last week's episode and I'll pause it and you know it brings up that uh film roll. Mm-hmm. And I look at like whatever the text is for the past two weeks. Last week it was big red letters. Most of them. So this 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 is the war that you're you're doing with the thumbnails now. I I'm just fucking with the algorithm at this point. Yeah. Oh yeah. Fans only share face too. Very good, bike me. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> so, Doom Three, the classic. Everyone loves it. Yes. The the classic that was uh, very divisive back in the day, like no video game before it has ever been. No sir. Especially it's, sequels. Sh- you shut your whore, but it taught me to walk into I uh, A had a Linux port out of the box day one. Uh B taught me to walk into rooms backwards. Yes. <laughs> See, the, co- the, co- the co-op works sometimes, just don't get on the train. But yeah, no, there's a mod that's a bit more of an overhaul. Uh it it changes a great deal many things. It makes the movement speed of the Doom Marine more in line with the like Doom One, Doom Two. And it sets the default FOV to 120. Uh, and <laughs> it makes the uh, footstep sounds, uh, you know, the quake hit markers, the do 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 do. Yeah, th- those are footstep sounds in this one, and that pissed me off. Uh, but hey, good news! It's available on ModDB, the uh, Nexus, uh, the link on Nexus mods. It's been uh, flagged for being um, automatically quarantined and maybe unsafe. I, there's a DLL or two DLLs actually in the uh, folder uh, because the game Max 86 DLL was a necessity for Doom 3 uh, on Windows, but it works with Doom 3 on Linux. Yeah, I remember this level. Oh, fuck yeah. this level. <laughs> where, where, where am I? I got turned around. Shit. Wait, this is where I came from? This fuck. Is Jordan Ice of our PTSD moment. Yeah. Uh, no. And yeah, no, no the, the, the game, it, it, it does the, like the auto exec bat file that it comes with is, uh, yeah, 120 <laughs> FOV and a stupid um, movement speed. Uh, it, it does what it says on the tin. I played enough to just get the pistol and hear what the difference in sound was like, and it does deal more damage. Instead of taking three shots to take down one of the regular zombies, it takes one. So there's that. 
Uh, and it's, it, it works. I suppose. <laughs> I, I don't care enough to be perfectly honest. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I've, I've done my Doom 3 trenches mm-hmm. with Ven. I, 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 I've I had think that Doom 3 just not clean out of yeah. my mouth, man. I'm good. Yeah, I, I, I have, it, I have it, no the, desire the to experience here it. was that it, it made it more like the classic Dooms. So I'm like, all right, okay. But I, I ended up getting uh, pissed off at the footstep sounds because why the fuck would you do that? I, I want like the... I want them to change it to like the the, the Fred Flintstone like twinkle toes when he's about to bowl like the the xylophone. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this next story comes from Hot Hardware. As they tell the world, watch Half-Life 2 run smooth as butter natively on a Raspberry 4. So what I need you to do is cue up the uh, melodica Jurassic Park. As it's running at roughly 13 FPS. I mean, that's about, that's about as well as it ran on my computer back in 2006, so it's authentic. Uh, it is running in Raspberry Pi 4, however, which is uh, that's kind of dope. That's kind of neat. I mean, look into our bright future as the person brags who can afford a Raspberry Pi 4 in 2023. <laughs> I mean, we're not all made of wet, stinky cash, but. Yeah, this is taking advantage of that 2018 uh, source code leak, right? Yeah, they uh, yep. they had the source code. They man- they managed to port and compile it for ARG64, which I get like, yes, it runs like ass, but still, it's Half Life Two running natively on a Raspberry Pi, man. That's that's pretty badass. Oh yeah, it's 100. Um, percent I don't really have a whole lot. I'm there's there'll be a link to the GitHub repo if you want to play around. Um, Yes, if, if the, you are, if you are uh, one official of the lucky... open sourcing of the source engine, <laughs> mm-hmm. like this is like one of the weird ones. Though. Like, where where yet, Valve? Where yet? Like, wh- wh- what's the point? Like, why not just open source? Uh, Sor- source, I, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, th- I think they're waiting on like I don't, I don't, I don't know what they're waiting on. I, I guess Source I, Two I, still uses a lot of the original source, so yeah, and, th- and that's all like <laughs> stolen. That's not stolen, but like purchased, like. Quake assets or Quake code, I think, because it started off as a modification for Quake. That was uh, Gold SRC. The, the yeah. that 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 was like the original engine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so. yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. This is, this is this is neat to see, but yeah, it's. I think much like everybody else, so we're like, yo, why why don't we have the source to Half Life Two yet? A lot of people are like, fuck if I know. I, Oh, did you but see no, that? Uh, now that uh, someone's actually successfully extracted the uh, the files and built a version that can work on a Raspberry Pi, so it'll work on anything. I want to see an open source source reimplementation that's actually you know uh, free to be distributed, not with the limitations of uh, this technically got leaked, so it's technically in the public domain. We can situation. call it quarter life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no full just, life. A, a life, <laughs> Roy. A life. Full, full, full life consequences already exist. Though. I did see that um, Valve has uh, filed a patent for uh, CS:GO 2. Yes, uh, uh, some binaries leaked, and Pierre Luc Griffet confirmed that those are legit. There is uh, uh, there is a CS:GO the 2 uh, Nvidia drivers yeah, leaked that. C- CS:GO 2, uh, <laughs> and so they're doing a trademark for it. And I read that, and I was like, "Damn it! I wish I was into CS:GO." Yeah. No, no, <laughs> you, know, you know, you just copy cpcs to mm-hmm. cs2.exe. There you go. Mm-hmm. Ported. So our last story of the news uh, is... Second. Second tell- last. Oh, wait. Last. Never mind. I can't count. No, not very well. Not this evening. Uh, why <laughs> you should stick with Windows over Linux for gaming. From makeuseof.com, Valve Steam Deck revolutionized Linux gaming, but there's still a few good reasons why you should stick to Windows PCs. For now, just a few. Just a few, though. I mean, calm down. Calm down, because here we go. Here we go. This is yet another in a long list of articles answering a question nobody asked. But hey, man, and somebody needed to write some words. And, you know, again, like nobody is suggesting that you give up your um, Windows gaming rig for Linux. It, it has not been done. You know, it, you know, if all you do is you play your games on PC, you get a game. That's, that's it. That's your Xbox. That's your PS5. It just has to be the PC. You know what? Keep fucking Windows. As best for you, man. Not to overlook like the work that's been done. You know, Wine Valve to help Linux users is like super easily play games on top of all the other cool shit we get to do on Linux. 
that that's a, that's this show right here. I was like, hey, we're running Linux day in and day out. Look at all this other cool stuff we get to do, and we get to play games. Fuck yeah, hell. Um, we're living in 2023. You know, and best arguably best mobile gaming devices on the market right now runs Linux. Period. That's it. And yeah, I know, I know. Somebody's getting ready to type into the YouTube comments, or maybe trying to make the funny ha ha's, and like, oh, not one. Well, maybe if I can get my audio working under Linux, they're gonna make that joke and. uh why would you publicly admit that you couldn't get audio working under Linux in 2023? That's sad. That's sad. also. I want to know exactly what audio hardware you got going on. Um, uh, PC, yeah. PC speaker doesn't play my YouTube videos. Pedro, the the audio hardware is. I've never installed Linux in my life, but I heard this is what the people say. Um, yeah. Put, <laughs> ah, the dream Lin- audio. Linux <laughs> trying to pretend you're smart enough to install an operating system. Step one. Um, <laughs> oh man. Here's the so, thing, though. Uh, I, uh, this does go off. Let, let, let's be fair to this. Uh, restrictive DRM doesn't fucking matter anymore. Third party launchers, the valid complaint, uh, Linux emulator support. Okay, they had to dig so deep. And two. so, yeah, find the, two, two yeah. fucking emulators Z- that don't Zenia. have a Linux version right now. <laughs> Xenia and Xbox the PS4. One. Yeah, yeah they, and the they, PS4. They legitimately one. <laughs> dragged out two fucking pieces of kit that no one's ever heard of. I'm like, okay. Um, I don't know. How two hard. emulators. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> Third party and tools. Never, never mind RetroArch. Just that that entire yeah. Linux based emulation. Hey man, shut system. up. Uh, listen, <laughs> all of your cheat engines might be a little bit dodgy, but don't worry. Uh, I'm sure there's probably a way for you to download your um like hacked, pirated, uh, virus encrusted, whatever. Uh, latest and greatest day one. Yeah, that's right. Your shit can be broken before anybody oxes. And um, yeah, but this 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 all starts from uh just false pretense of no one's trying to convince you to get rid of your Linux gaming machine and it's all Linux. No one. I, th- I think it's at this point, every tech website is kind of obligated to have this article because it's, and it's like, they're almost copy pastes of each other. Cause they always say the exact same stuff. It's, mm-hmm. it's kind of funny. Well, th- I, 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 is this Microsoft article actually- has to write itself because again, I will, I'll, I will stand. <laughs> it is coming from a false pretense because Nobody, including Valve, is saying, format your fucking Windows machine and install Linux for gaming. Nobody's saying that. Period. I am, but that's just because I'm an asshole. <laughs> and I want people to have broken computers. It, it, as someone who supports Windows for his day job, um, fuck Windows. Uh, but no, is Microsoft actively going around paying all these tech websites to spread a bit of FUD? Because I honestly don't think they are. Uh, although I'm sure they appreciate the free advertising that literally uh, every single one of them are giving them, but why? Why would you? I mean, I mean, well, with this is shit. The, why? The, the, the answer is because we're talking about it right now. That's the, that's that's the unfortunate reality. This is just clickbait. Yeah. We, we, if you need to write some that words, trap. but uh, also this is like a nice warm hug for Windows users. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, confirmation bias, it's like yeah. uh yeah what, what do you say when you when you go online looking for did, did i make the right decision internet please confirm confirm what i my bias. and i need you to think about it the right way this is the same type of person who's like oh yeah you got a playstation 4 like say back in the day or ps3 and back in the day and yes i side examples like oh yeah are you happy you want to put Linux on you like no like i completely understandable and I feel yeah. the same way with somebody who's got, you know, the, hey man, I, I set up a Linux, uh, not even Linux, I set up a Windows gaming rig, I use this, play this Windows games and all that. Do you want to install Linux on it? Probably not. But if you got that curiosity, you're like, fuck yeah, I want a, something to play around, I want to learn how this thing works, then, then go fucking do it. But I will, again, hammer this home. <laughs> Nobody's saying, format your fucking gaming rig to install Linux for better performance or anything. No and if one, someone is saying that, you need to mute that They're a Windows user. Instantly. <laughs> <laughs> complaining about not being able to get their audio to work because never, <laughs> yeah. yeah although they bring up like the nuvo oh the nuvo makes games not work on linux that hasn't been the case in over three years the fuck <laughs> uh, and i mean like la- la- launcher woes everyone fucking hates launchers yeah like, the, yeah launcher is breaking games on windows too when rockstar they bring up the uh the social club when they did the original update it was broken on Windows 11. People already using Windows 11 couldn't play the fuck game. <laughs> How to activate oh. Windows 11 with a Windows 7 key? Chrome tabs. I, I'm looking at like I have. I know make use of a legitimate website to whatever, but 
Yeah, you can see what they know. It's mostly tech stuff. All right. Yeah, I, I, I think it was a slow news day, and they needed yeah. to. Needed it's to like okay, else. we got to meet our word quota. Just It'll make dr- some shit up. Hey, <laughs> they, like like I said before, this shit drives engagement. We're doing it now. Whoa, uh, engage. All right. Well, coming up next, uh, we're gonna try and engage a game, and it's gonna gonna fail us on multiple levels. Levels. Let's uh, let's throw some shares of scrappage. Welcome back. It's time for the Chairquisition. What is that? It's the part of the show where we take a game, install it on two decks, uh, some random computers, and then we synthesize that into a highly, you know, you know, orig- original scoring system. One chair means that it's garbage. Four chairs means that it's amazing. This week, we're taking a look at Scrappage, developed by Geek Spree, done on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for about five bucks. What is it? In this unforgiving roguelike twin-stick shooter, death awaits you behind every corner. Fight your way through hordes of monsters, eliminate bosses, and loot their valuable items and body parts. With them, you can enhance your own body, unlock powerful skills, and create your own unique builds. Gotta thank Geek Spree for sending us some keys over Curator Connect. So, let's let's get into it, Pedro. Uh, you, okay, you uh, so a little, <laughs> a little preface. Apparently, my uh, experience does not represent uh, <laughs> the general... Um, way that the game seems to be working for both Ven and Jordan included, because I didn't run into the bugs that they will be telling you about, but hey, over here on the desktop with the 6700 XT and the 5800 X3D, launch that out of the box, uh, It uh, when I got into the game, it was uh, the little counter on the bottom left was saying that I was hitting a thousand FPS, so that that's something. Uh, <laughs> on the Steam Deck, it also works just fine, and I always have that, uh, by default, it's capped at 40, but I sometimes unlock for games that run really well, I unlock it to 60, and it works just fine as well. I'm on the beta branch on the Steam Deck. Um, the menu traversal with the D-pad had similar issues to Rush Away from last week, but the left and right trigger seemed to be properly mapped, so I don't think this was intentional, this is just a cock up. Uh, the, um, I ended up playing with the mouse and keyboard instead, because it's much easier. Uh, you can rebind all the keys, including on the controller, including setting the same button to fire both weapons at once. It feels weird, you know, 2023 current year argument, that something which, for accessibility, it makes so much sense, and it's still so rare this, these days. So many games just flat out refuse to let you overlap keybinds like that, probably for a very good reason, but that, that's a genuinely good thing to have. Uh, and the, well, the graphics, uh, they, if you're looking at the video version, you're looking at them now, it's, they scream, hello, I'm from the asset store <laughs> and, uh, the background music, the background music kind of threw me off because I started listening to it. It's like, wow, you could take the background music and just listen to it and go, oh yeah, this is from cyberpunk. No, no, it isn't, <laughs> but it sounds exactly like it. Uh, yeah, it, it, it doesn't seem to fit except for those levels where like, you're killing robots, like the ones you just saw. But yeah, it is, um, for the fun, well, it starts real frustrating. Your character is slow, the one weapon you have is the fire rate of a 40 millimeter a single barrel anti-aerial gun, and the projectile manages to move even slower than you'd expect. It's basically impossible until you unlock the random weapon upgrade at the start, and the game takes pity on you. Pity, in Scrappage, has the form of a, uh, <laughs> stop sign, uh, turned into a shield. Uh, why is it a pity? Uh, because it gives you plus 10 regen. Yeah. Then you can progress. <laughs> then you actually stand a chance. Uh, I've made it to the 8th or ninth level until they sandwich you in between superior fights and elite fights and whatnot. I'll be honest, the shooting doesn't feel very good. Your character being as slow as they are at the start is terrible. The fire rate of the starting gun is god-awful, and some enemies are just straight-up bullshit. But I like it. D- Maybe it's the Souls-like enjoyer in me trying to find the proverbial hump to get over and finally get good. But, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Three chairs. I'm working on it. Three chairs. Ah. <laughs> over here on Debian Testing, on a 1920X3060 power box of business, you know, it has everything you need to run out of the box. It's got windowed, it's got full screen, it's got graphic and volume sliders, it's got rebindable controls, a message from the developer to please don't... Uh, be mean to him in the options menu and also join his discord if you want to report bugs message yeah 60 at 2160p that's consumer 4k on the 3060 it's really all you need to know you're going to limit that it can handle it it can deal with the business but 
as you might notice if you're watching the video, you're in for another riveting episode of Live, Die, Top Down Shooter, because that's the game, again, we're reviewing. If you've been looking at Vampire Survivors and thinking, hey man, if you could suck all the joy out of that shit and uh, put in some annoying ass bugs, we might have something. Well, damn, here you go. Here you go. This is a roguelike top down shooter and it becomes bullet hell kind of out of left field. It does. It's like, oh shit, this is a bullet hell all of a sudden somewhere around like stage three and things just start flying at you. And, you know, I say that not even lovingly. I'm like, why? Why? I thought I just had like a zombie shooter thing. Then there's like no shooty, shooty, pew, pew. I did beat a boss. Um, and I was immediately just like one shotted by another. And I purchased a gun that like three shot at that boss. <laughs> and did I mention like the five levels that I completed without even playing them? Because that's a true story. You just pop in the levels and it's like, boom, thank you for completing it. Done. Now, if that bug could be mixed in with one that had given me like a bazillion bits of currency so I could buy a bunch of shit, I wouldn't have mind, but it didn't. So I was just kind of stuck back in the, you know, new level now, harder level with the, the same old shit. Oh, did I, I killed a boss one time because he got a case of the stocks. That was kind of neat. He got wedged on a rock. I'm like, oh, I'll just sit here and kill you. The game does get a little bit easier, though, um, when you're reminded about the leveling system, when you're digging around the menu trying to figure out how to activate the drones. You're like, oh, right, I can upgrade, like, my power and strength and running and all that, which, that's the thing. And the scrappage. Um, I gotta say this. Last week, I thought I was being a little rough on a game for having a bad menuing system. Scrappage is the second game this year in the contention for the 2023. What the absolute fuck were you thinking when designing those menus? Award here at LGC. Because, like, they're just bad. I don't care. They're bad with the controller. They're bad with the mouse. They're just bad. That's just all the way around them. But at the end of the day, what do we have? This is your typical developer's first game that shouldn't be on Steam. Take 1713. We've seen this game. This is the game you start out with. This is the one, it's your, your first salvo, your out of the gate thing. This game's been made a million times and this one doesn't do anything new. But instead of pooping on it, here's a little bit of advice. You can't put this critter back into early access. So embrace the jank you got going on. Embrace the bugs and the craziness. Refine your skills and I want you to focus on adding some online multiplayer to this so we can spread the jank together. We can get the bugs in stereo and have a good time like that. But yeah, I mean, technically it's a functioning game. I'll give you two chairs, but like that's being extraordinarily generous, even at $4.99, because like, you're experimenting on paying customers. Yeah, I'm going to be way less generous than then. On uh, Fedora 3764-bit with the R93900X and the GTX 1080 Ti, it launches out of the box. Same on the deck on the stable branch. Hold 60 at UHD on both. Uh, well, I guess the deck doesn't do UHD, but native resolution, whatever. Uh, the controls are sanely mapped. It's a pretty standard twin stick shooter. Um, it, you know what? I'll, I'll give this game some credit. It actually has some graphical options. It has like an actually fleshed out options menu where you can do things like enable the vampire survivors mode if you want to make this a single stick shooter or uh, you want to support touch controls, which apparently this also has. Um, yeah, this game is buggy as fuck. Twice my movement got shut off, and one of those times the boss glitched out and I couldn't hit them, but for some reason I was still getting infinite lifesteal and I just couldn't die. I'll talk a little bit about more of that later. Um, but fun-wise, shmups, not usually my jam, but I can, I can respect a well-made one and well-designed and executed one, Assault Android Cactus, etc. This one, it was just okay. Uh, you got your standard roguelike level progression where you can split off and decide what kind of stores and fights you want to get into. Uh, kill enough enemies, uh, you can start upgrading your starting layout or you can upgrade your current run. Um, and you got you gotta unlock those upgrades, especially uh, because especially that's where all the, the busted shit is. I got one power up that just like murder fuck bosses within like two seconds. It was like one of the anti area crowd control things. But if you just go up to a boss and hit it, they just die. So that was fun. Um, and that, and like any curve that relies on um, the, the sort of busted ass shit that lets you cruise through the difficulty levels um, or to sort of flatten its difficulty curve, it's pretty feast or famine. You either get some busted ass shit right away, that lets you cruise through or you're just scraping by that enemy. I it's not really challenging. They all just beeline towards you. There is a slight, twi slight twist in that someone played Doom 3 and got used to the idea that, oh, we'll just spawn some enemies behind you so that you're constantly surrounded. 
that trick gets old real quick. And you once you get into fights, you're just like, I'm going to turn around because, oh, there they are. They are the enemies that came from the area that I just cleared out. And if you go back there, all the enemies are still dead. So, mm. oh, yeah. And yeah, Ven, Ven brought this up. This game has a bug where you'll just randomly win a map directly after starting it. And it happened to me three times in a row. Uh, and then after that, it was only once or twice after starting a run. And, you know, uh, it, it, as I mentioned, if you're not doing the upgrades, you're kind of shit out of luck once you get into the actual level proper and you just get completely, uh, completely just murder fucked. Um, I also had an instant loss bug as well, which I didn't mention in the notes, but the level started, I hit the start button and it said, you lose too fucking bad. Um, and you know, difficulty, this guy scales, uh, by becoming a bullet hell. Uh, and if you don't have the good luck to deal with it, as I mentioned, you're just shit out of luck. So it's not a bad mechanic. You got stuff like Hades that implements something similar, but that also has like solid gameplay, which this doesn't have. It's kind of a brainless slog, and like you're playing, you're playing loot roulette until you get the busted shit. And other than that, you're just uh, you're just live die repeat. It's a bad Tom Cruise movie. I'm gonna give it one share. It would have gotten two, but just all the bugs, man. It's not not acceptable. <laughs> I, I did not. I usually am the one who runs into the bugs but not this time <laughs> i don't know i mean like this i was kind of curious about like, how much you didn't dislike the game pedro because you're usually the first to like complain about like the having a little like knock back and impact when you're shooting at things other than just like pew 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 arm stuck out pew, pew, I, pew. I specifically mentioned that yes that is very disappointing but something about how hard the game starts you out and it's completely merciless because yes you you won't be making progress beyond the first or the second combat uh, until you unlock the ability to have a better gun at the start but it felt good when i did that and i started to enjoy what the game did in fact offer yeah so i watched I, this i, I, I looked I, I, at I, what I, I played and i watched you know again pedro and i'm like See, I can watch Vampire Survivors and watch like that shit get unhinged and like start getting chaotic. And I'm like, I get that. This, so I'm like, there's just like well, a bunch of extra steps. This is a, a different of- experience. Yes, the, the the comparison will be made, obviously. But yeah, in this the game is itself, not- where it says Vampire Survivors in the game, yeah, yeah. Uh, the Vampire <laughs> yeah. Survivors the mode, aiming, it's explicitly uh, called that. Yeah, but uh, in Vampire Survivors, it also automatically shoots. In this one, even if it aims automatically at the closest enemy, you still have to press the shoot button. So you want to hold down both of your trigger buttons at the same time. (laughs) That's the thing. You can, I also mentioned that, you can bind, say, the left trigger button that I can actually reach uh, to shoot both guns from both hands at the same time. I don't think he did. It was a yes or no question, but. (laughs) <laughs> so I, 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 I had a similar experience to Pedro, right? Like once you start unlocking the upgrades and it's like, okay, well, this is actually manageable, but yeah, like the, the again, just, just the bugs, right? Like, mm-hmm. okay, I start to have fun and then shit just breaks. And then I didn't run into that. So maybe yeah. that's why I ended up enjoying it more. <laughs> and, 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 you know, maybe, maybe may, I did, I, this has a couch co-op. I didn't get a chance to test that out. Maybe that saves it. Maybe maybe online multiplayer would save it as well. I don't know. You know what this game really needs, I think? A fucking mini-map. I got there, especially mm. given how how slow you move, and like it it does the thing where like you can beeline it straight to the boss and fight him, or you can like scrounge and like try to get all the power-ups and shit. But then you gotta remember where all the things are, and it's real annoying because all you move so slow, you're like and if you take the wrong if you take the wrong left, then you know you're 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 chugging back and forth. Just know, knowing where you are would be nice. It's like well, that's probably the boss the first time. I, I knew there was like 80 plus percent chance that it was just going to get wedged in a corner anyway, and I was going to be able yeah. to take it out. For sure. Mm. Oh, yeah. it's a game. Uh, it exists. It's four ninety nine. Yeah. Yes. The, the, the price also helps. It's not trying to, you know, <laughs> price itself Hollow Knight-like and not deliver on the Hollow Knight experience. <laughs> yep. Th- thank God for small miracles. Coming up next, uh, we try not to cl- crash into planets, and we talk about our oldest hardware. So, oh, I'm not entirely sure that's what you'd call a smooth podcast. Seven forty-seven coming out of the sky. <laughs> hopefully, we can pull a uh, Sully O'Sullivan and uh, just yeah, land us in the middle of the river. Why not? <laughs> but chances are. During Chances this, are uh, what? During this, how dare you imply I'm a betting man? Uh, 
<laughs> Load up I know I, I, I am a little bit susceptible to uh, the gambling thing. That's why I try to stay away from that stuff as much as possible. I'm call you Pedro Lootbox, Mateus. Oh, dude. Yeah, I, that's why I, I don't I, do I, it. I, I got hit by that hard. I got 100% have an addictive personality. I got to stay the fuck away from that shit. Really? See, I, I think I got that, but my aversion to spending money overrides that like instantaneously. Yeah, Even that, that's Vegas, the, dude. the thing I, I, that stops I, I, me because I look at the prices like, yeah. mm, no. <laughs> that, yeah, the, and, and that, that is the reason why. If I did not have that block in place, oh mm-hmm. man, I would be poor as shit, man. But maybe uh, you uh, don't have that block in place when it comes to um, listening to podcasts on the internet and you have opinions. I about watch this my podcast one. on YouTube. <laughs> I mean, or watching them m- on YouTube. M- We're m- on many YouTube, people technically. Do. But you, if you have something to say, YouTube comments are valid, but the best way to do it is to go to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button. Uh, get your five dollar milkshake and read the caveats at the top. That's, that's just what, what they cost like. now. That's just what they cost now. That's <laughs> they're not that five dollars isn't even a fancy milkshake. That is just no. That's cost. just the McDonald's milkshake. Yeah, it's five bucks. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be googling. I have no idea. <laughs> We're about to find out exactly uh, how many dollars milkshakes are nowadays. Uh, we, we need we need like a special gra- graphic where it's like McDonald's price check. <laughs> Mango pineapple smoothie, which is no orange mocha frappuccino, is uh, ah, three forty nine. <laughs> the large is still under three dollars. That's that's pretty good for the chocolate shakes. All right, <laughs> four more rows. <laughs> oh, we we have like an index. Oh, 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 hold right. up, when, hold up. When is this from? Oh, what, what, Tuesday, twenty sixteen. Twenty sixteen. Yeah. Ooh, that, no. <laughs> yeah. Okay, chocolate shake prices. Here we go. This is going to be updated. Yeah, uh, max price four nineteen. That uh, yeah, but- in Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Eh? <laughs> Massachusetts. It says three eighty nine in Cali. Um, Idaho is three thirty nine. Okay, so yeah, that's that's four four dollar five dollar milkshake. Like that's that's still way more than a milkshake norm used to cost. Well, I think yeah, the yeah, whole $2 thing was the, like, the, <laughs> the concept of a five dollar milkshake when a milkshake was like maybe a buck for an extra yeah, large. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and 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 now yeah it's pretty close you had every right just to want to know what it tasted like what the flavor was put some so bourbon in it yeah. last week <laughs> last week i brought up a game flight dangerous and i hadn't had an update in a while and it was the uh racing part of the um what was the game elite uh, dangerous elite dangerous, elite dangerous thank you <laughs> and with all you know all that boring stuff sucked out of it and only the gamey racy part and i'm like this is gotta need it needs some explanations and uh you know what i have some questions turns out uh juki boom wrote in yuki boom uh, yeah uh yuki boom boom juki boom she hit us up and she's like if you're the develop she's quoting us if you're the developer of fly dangerous we got lots of questions for you solid hit me up thanks for covering it i i guess we will yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, I got a bunch of questions. Also, um, I don't know. We'll work something out. I'll get you back up. I was like, left as a YouTube comment. I've been meaning to get back to it. It's always like this. Is just goes out to everybody. Please use our contact form so I don't forget these things. Um, please. Yeah, we, and, your email address is already there because you had to type it in. So it's easier. <laughs> um, it just stays there. Like I will fucking forget YouTube comments in a heartbeat, man. I know. Uh, however, they are, they are I, I've made a special note of this. Um. Yeah, especially like when you're getting closer to like maybe the next release or something like that. We'd like to get you on the show and like talk mm-hmm. about like just whatever, right? Like the, no, the I, 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 no, we're we're going to be talking about uh, strictly uh, things happening in Indonesia. Okay, the gaming scene, board gaming scene, board games, Indonesia. Okay. I don't know enough play. about Indonesia to make a for, comment for, one way or another. Play, play, playing some Dominion, <laughs> playing some Catan. I, I have no idea. <laughs> Some some ticket to ride Indonesian edition <laughs> Pan Asian. I don't know. Uh, thanks for getting back to us. Yeah, seriously, we do have um. Uh, I just got like questions about development of the game, especially uh, along things like tutorials and how that's going to flush out. Because uh, somebody like me, I don't have a fuck all idea what I'm doing. I'm just like, hey, racing game. I want to play. It's got trophies. Hey, give me my trophies. And followed with um, should I get hardware for this? Which I'm not. But it'd be like, <laughs> but it'd be nice to know that like right from the get go, right? Of like, don't don't get your hopes up, champ. Like, ah, okay. Up next. Simon. And uh, Simon uh, is questioning how old our PCs actually are. What uh, does Simon asking, say? Uh, yo, what's your 
oldest piece of hardware still in active in your gaming computer. No retro, smiley face. Um, well, uh, we had some discussions about this before we started the show. Okay, when you say inactive in your uh, gaming computer... Wait, Pedro, you you're supposed just, to say just, subscribe just, on Patreon to get the <laughs> conversation yeah, piece credit. Just, just, just scraping for those technicalities, aren't you? When you say <laughs> in your computer, what do you mean by it? You mean like partially in or like fully embedded yeah, or like, when you say alive what do you mean by that i mean yeah. like full pulse like uh do you do like independent <laughs> yeah. high up when, when, when you say the word like when you, when you say the system, 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 what are yes. you referring to yeah, yeah like. <laughs> but yeah no inside the computer for my part is uh the cpu heatsink the um be quiet dark rock 4 uh that's uh four year yeah four years old now uh, everything else got replaced over the past three years, so yeah. <laughs> How about uh, you, outside Jordan? the computer? I, 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 th- <laughs> I, th- I think I'm the winner with my 13 year old power supply. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, I thought my Kingston, uh, Kingston 249 gig SSD. I checked it. Uh, drive status in the previous super shows and was five years. Mm. But it seems like there was something else, wasn't there? That I. I Mm. Your, your, uh, your, 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 uh, the fiber optic <laughs> card uh, my Mellanox Connect X3 from NVIDIA is uh, from 2013 so 10 years old yeah. so I, is, I beat you up by like 2 years maybe I don't know uh, we, what's going to last longer <laughs> I don't know <laughs> who's got to blink first uh, that, that, that is a very valid question I mean I have I, I think both are both products are equally as dodgy because I'm dealing with like lasers and shit, mm. which does require optics. So, but you got capacitors, <laughs> big chunky capacitors too. <laughs> but it's retro, it's vintage, man. It's not like modular, none of that new fancy no, stuff. No, I, I got I got a bunch <laughs> of cables crammed in the back of the case. Yeah, dude, I saw a really nice uh, concept for power supply. Uh, was uh, what is that little bullshit? Uh, the little baby sleds uh, power supplies, the PEX. Uh, what are they called? The one I put in rectangle, like the little oh, long ones. Um, uh, I don't know. You call yourself technology enthusiast. <laughs> I don't deal with physical <laughs> hardware anymore, man. It's all the cloud. What is it called? Damn it. Flex uh, ATX. Uh, or yeah, the the flat ones like the server ones are Flex ATX. Is that Tiny it? Tiny TX. Let me see. Uh, flex. Y- YTX. We get a look. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this guy, because I was thinking about replacing it with one of these. Um, but it's too much. Uh, one of these little guys. But what it was, it was a regular size uh, power supply with two of those, two slots for those guys, mm, so you could stack right. in <laughs> two of them like. Damn, that's a good well, idea. So we could do redundancy, <laughs> or you could power them both at the same time. Yeah, have like and, one for the motherboard and one for like the yeah, video cards. And you can yeah. like really dial in how much power you need with options for two. You know, you could have like one for your motherboard and something like maybe just one for your GPU or something like that. Then I looked at the price for the containers, like seven hundred bucks just for the ah, show. Yeah, <laughs> if you're going they, to they, have that kind of a control, good idea. <laughs> yeah. they have a good idea, and they're going to charge you for it, dude. Dicks. Um, so yeah, 13 year old PSU. What is your oldest component inside of your PC and inside? inside Patrick, cause... don't answer. Inside. Yes. Mir- 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 Mirror is disqualified from this competition. Right. <laughs> uh, it specifically says no retro. <laughs> yeah, no retro, no vintage. It's got to be what your uh, daily driver is day in and day out. And don't try to pretend I'm like, no, my daily driver is what's 10400 480. No, the fuck it's not. Get the fuck out of yes. here. Don't waste maybe, my daily maybe, driver maybe is my T43 inside a T42 ThinkPad. Uh, yeah. If, if, we, <laughs> if, we, if we get George Martin writing in, then I'll believe it. Oh, you see, <laughs> like, this is like, go, go listen, because we, we get pretty far on the weeds. Like, what, what counts? Like, this, what about attached to the, no, inside the case. Yeah. Inside the case, plugged in, and like, having power actively. Doesn't it count if it's plugged in or screwed into the outside of the case? It's going to be internal. It's going to be inside. Yeah. The, the, got, the internalness is the, guts, uh, the key here. The kishkas. <laughs> and no, it doesn't count if you like pick some old lesb shit and shove inside. <laughs> yeah, no, if you just duct tape 
like a sound interface on the inside of your case now and you have but, the cables but, running in there <laughs> sure. but here's the thing if you get it powered by the internal psu then it will count mm. <laughs> i mean it's powered off of the usb so i can power just running it off of an internal usb port. header so, yeah i mean like listen i got wiggle room here i don't know <laughs> Let, uh, let's, listen just set your computer on fire and you win <laughs> don't do that you don't win <laughs> i'm not falling for that again monster Ladies and gentlemen, on that ancient, super old bombshell, we're going to cue the music. You can always find us pulling out of the nightmare train station. Woo, woo, as the whistle does go at 8.30 Eastern here at twitch.tv forward slash link scheme guys come hang out with us live. Do that dance that we do. Scream in my direction on Twitter. Just at Vin Stone. Scream in my direction on Mastodon. Mast.linuxgamecast.com. I'm just at Vin. Or uh, scream at me in our Discord IRC and all that shit's connected. Add Vin there. I'll find you. You'll find me. It'll be awesome. I'm Jordan. I'm your favorite fire hazard. You can find me on Twitter at Shock the Burning Fool or uh, Mastodon at uh, Mastodonlinuxgamecast.com. I'm at Frojo. And you can find me staring longingly at eBay looking for more old laptops for, re- for me to waste my money on. <laughs> Uh, at unaccounted four on Twitter, uh, or uh, at unaccounted four with the actual number four on mass.linuxgamecast.com. Hashtag four dudes. Backwards, upside down, three T thing. I don't know. Whatever. C- control, alt, MX, yeah, butterfly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Special op codes. Credits. Yeah. Alt, sysrec, re i sub. Tar, tar, ZXVF. <laughs> What? Yeah, XZVF. Yeah. Yep. Uh, we got to thank our advisors, Omegas, our theorem. We got to thank our executive producers coming up. They're Barbara M. Scott Michaud, Tom McCass, Mike G, drummer Kohaku Pebble, Tomash Hakim, and David. We got our Chicago Kicks Ass Tears. We got Super Dust Dote, Empty, and Eggy, and Jeremiah, Bullfrog. Yeah. <laughs> sea Monsters. Renault Rider X Machina Trudgy. Trudgy. Uh- Trudgy. Okay, I read Trudgy twice, but System there T. we go. Veritanuda, Justin, Fro- uh, Frostclaw, Nubbin, Darkwing, System T, Dunzing Joe, Ohi One, and Kyrillo. Plenty of death notes. Uh, Doom 2, Smash Lee, Leonardo, Leonardo Dax in there, Chow, Fox is in there, Jalad, Alex. Renee, Leonardo the Kresny, Kim, Smash Lee, G, Chris, Stephen, Jill. There they are. Doom 2.1, Stephen B, Dirty Thing, back. Game of Tron, Dodgers, Anthrus Gaming. We're I reading Chairlings now. real choppy now, I can't see. <laughs> Yeah, we got to thank Incredible Lyric, Evandro, Igal, Dementor, Zeno, Daniel, Belric, AJ, Minus Eggs. Nine, Monica, Alex, Mark. Tom, Sacred Egg, D-Spec. Yeah, let's go. L- 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 joined us for Shrek Media for the first time. That was pretty fun. Thanks. Mm-hmm. And the guys on the wall, the names, in the lights. Humans. The humans. The humans. 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 Fire, everybody. We'll see you next week. And remember, uh, stay away from those overpriced... Uh, Umox. Flex ATX power supplies. Goddamn. <laughs> don't keep don't keep eggs in your PC. They don't last. Or cook them on your uh, CPU. Scramble. Hey, yeah. Listen, <laughs> dude. I'm already CPU wor- steamed eggs. We we can have uh, fried rice. We already got the uh, rice cooker and video yeah. card. <laughs> we we and we got the valve air fryer. So bye bye. Mm-hmm. Five dudes.